Hey everyone, I'm, I know that everybody right now has their eyes on the weather and who better than the state climatologist, Jay Grimes, to kind of give us an update. Jay, if you can, first off, let's break this down. What are we expecting? Oh, this is going to be a memorable event, no question about it. Uh, lots of confidence in some significant snows across south and central Louisiana. Uh, could see two, four, even five inches of rain with some uh, rain, snow with some locally higher totals uh, anywhere from Alexandria down to the coast. It's been a while since we've had an event like that. And the other thing is we don't want to discount just how bitterly cold it's going to be and how long it's going to be cold. We're looking at five or six nights for a good bit of uh, Louisiana dealing with hard freezes. And basically from late Monday night into Wednesday morning, Many communities will be out or below freezing that entire stretch. 35 to 40 hours will get a little, and I mean a little window where we're at or above freezing on Wednesday midday, and then we dive back down to freezing temperatures for the rest of Wednesday into the mid-late morning on Thursday. So between Monday night late and Thursday noon, a lot of the state is going to be looking at 45, 50, maybe even 60 hours of freezing temperatures. That has a big impact even before we start talking about snow. So I guess since you're talking about that, let's start there. A lot of places have already shut down for Tuesday. Do you expect these closures to go well past Tuesday? You know, I, I at this point, remember that our forecast skill for snow is pretty iffy. But we've seen we've had a lot of confidence in the fact that these models that we use have all been consistently pushing these numbers two, four, five inches of snow. We get in that higher end, three, four to five inches of snow on Tuesday. Then I would say folks need to be thinking that Wednesday will be a near shutdown day as well. Temperatures on Tuesday staying below freezing. So whatever falls is going to fall as snow and it's going to stick immediately. The ground's already going to be frozen by the time we start getting that snow. So it's not going to be one of those events where we get the flakes, but it hits the ground and it turns into liquid. And of course, freezing rain would be a terrible thing. Actually, freezing rain sometimes is even more serious. But in this case, it's almost all going to be snow, except for maybe a thin veneer down in the coastal parishes where they'll be dealing with a snow-sleet mix. Talk to us about the single digits, or should we be expecting single digits when it comes to the wind chill? Oh, uh, wind chills for even as far south as uh, the I-1012 corridor for Louisiana, wind chills could get down to or even below 10 degrees, on, uh, particularly on early Wednesday morning. So we're talking about uh, a string of hours below freezing, and then these really frightening wind chills, numbers we very uh, rarely see down here. And so uh, this is really going to be an issue for keeping even people that have just marginal heating in their homes. They're going to really struggle with that. And of course, the state is stepping up. A lot of the uh, state and parish uh, parishes are opening warming centers with the, uh, uh, the concern that a lot of homes just aren't built to handle this. So, Jay, let's let's go back real quick. Um, I'm obviously you're very aware, uh, uh, very aware of this. I'm sure that Valentine's of 1895 that was the record year for Louisiana. Are we going to come close to that one? And we're having what was it back then? 12, 13 inches of snow. Well, it depends on where you go. Believe it or not, if you know where rain is on the west side of Lafayette, how about 24 inches? Wow widespread 10 to 20 inch rain uh, snow totals in the southwestern part of the state. No, we're not going to see that. And okay. thankfully not, because that would shut us down for a week. But let's face it, even three, four or five inches of snow is going to be problematic. We just aren't equipped to handle it. DOTD and LSP are going to do a great job trying to keep those roads open but I think, you know, with the temperatures being what they are, I think they're going to have their hands full, especially from Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Now, a little bit of good news on Wednesday is we'll get some sunshine. And so that may help uh, dry up uh, the, the uh, lingering moisture on some roads. But 
I think especially in rural areas and even in suburban areas, it's going to be a mess. And even what starts to melt on Wednesday will refreeze as we get into Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So I'm even hinting at a possibility that even Thursday morning's commute could be a little bit dicey for parts of the state. Okay. So really at the end of the day, it's going to be crucial for everybody to be keeping eyes on the media and just reports coming out from all officials, because it sounds like a very fluid situation. It, it is fluid, but you know, now you, now, right now you've got 24 plus hours to get ready. And what I would tell people, what I'm telling my family, if you were looking for the yardstick is be ready to stay home, not just Tuesday, but possibly Wednesday, which means go out and get what you need now. And by the way, I was in the store earlier today and there's already the hurricane rush on bread and milk. Uh, uh, but you've also got to remember when you go get those supplies, you need to get it for a couple of days, not just for Tuesday. And we're going to see some other impacts, too. These bitterly cold temperatures, even though they won't get the snow in North Louisiana, they're going to get as cold or colder conditions there than we do in the south. And so uh, we're looking at uh, widespread uh, water uh access issues. A lot of the smaller water utilities are already telling their customers, be prepared for them to shut down. They just aren't designed to handle this prolonged period of excessively cold weather. Fortunately for us, since most of this will fall as snow, I don't think we'll see widespread outages, power outages, but there will be occasions and places where the snow causes a tree limb to drop, which knocks down some power lines. And we could see some uh, sporadic uh, spotty power outages across the southern half of the state. And given the cold, that's the worst thing you can do. And oh, yeah, what do we do when it gets this cold in terms of water? Yes. You drip the pipes, you drip the sink. Well, that's going to drive water pressure down even lower. So everybody, even in some of the uh, urban areas, need to be prepared for the fact that water pressure is probably going to be a little on the low side for Tuesday into Wednesday at the very least. So, so again, is, this is going to have widespread impacts. That's what I was going to say. On the water pressure, Jay, is that one of those, like, there's not really a fix to it? You're just going to have to deal with low water pressure these next few days? That's exactly right. I mean, in fact, in some of these rural areas where they're either the private water companies or the small cooperative uh, companies, uh, as I said, some of them are already uh, notifying their customers that they are going to turn the water off because they simply can't handle that duration of these 20 degree and even teens uh, in terms of the temperatures. So folks need to be prepared for that as well. If you live in one of those areas where you have frequent water issues, I'd say run out today and get a couple of cases of water. What about gas? Is that going to be much of the same if there are outages? People who have gas, if they're using that, is, should we expect low Are you gas? Talking about natural well? gas? Yes, sir. Yeah, in, in some instances, that could be a little bit of a problem, especially because uh, it's more of a pressure issue there, especially again in the back suburban and rural areas, because those people that use uh, natural gas for heating. Well, everybody's going to have their furnaces cranked up to max. So the pull is going to be at, a, at the sort of the high end of what some of those services can really deliver. So that's going to be an issue, too, I think, at least in some communities in the state. Jay, talk to me about the science of why we're going to see this snow in Louisiana. I mean, it's usually a treat for us, but this this one's going to be rare. And this one is a textbook setup. Uh, we already are beginning to get that first taste of the Arctic air today. I mean, yesterday we were in the mid and upper 70s. Today we've got communities struggling, struggling to get into the 40s. Tuesday, we're not going to get above freezing. I mean, it's just heading downhill. And what's happening is, think of it as molasses poured over the globe. Bitterly cold Arctic air is just working its way southward. And it's going to keep coming down for the next couple of days. In fact, for many of us, Wednesday morning will actually be the coldest. So it's going to continue to get cold and colder each morning as we go from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday. So there's the sort of the atmosphere delivering the cold chill that's going to take whatever moisture is available and turn it into snow. Then we get the double whammy here of a Gulf non-tropical system 
that's going to be working its way from west to east in uh, and near the Louisiana coast. That's why this is going to be a snow event for South Louisiana and up along the I-20. They'll be lucky. Well, lucky. They probably won't see much of any snow at all for the northern parishes. This is purely a freeze monster freeze event. It's really, if you think about it, from Alex South that the snow is going to be an issue. And what's happening? We've got that cold air coming down and very cold air rides along the surface of the ground. Cold air is dense. It's very heavy. And so what's going to happen is that Gulf moisture with that Gulf system is going to ride over top of that layer of very cold air. That cold air is just going to crystallize it all and then it falls as snow. So that's one of the things we know here is that essentially all of it is going to fall as snow. That's kind of unusual for Louisiana too. We typically either start off with rain or end with rain. Not in this instance. It's going to be cold enough that it is all snow, except again, maybe along the coastal margin. And the other thing is that once it starts to snow, the temperatures, surface temperatures are going to be cold enough that just about every bit of it sticks. It's not going to be one of those things where you see the snow falling and then it melts on contact. Not this time. It is going to be basically all snow and all accumulation. Wow. Um, Jay, do you mind going through? So we've pulled some of our own records that the all-time snow records, it looks like obviously 1895 was the record. But then after that, we even have what, 1914? 1940, yep. 2017, and 1988. Yeah, and the other thing we got to remember is that uh, the if you're talking about the record at Metro Airport, especially, that record has been compromised a little bit in the last 20 years or so. Since the Weather Service, the operational part of the Weather Service, the manned office there went away and the, in, in the uh, uh, weather recording at Metro Airport uh, in particular, Metro Airport and Lafayette Airport, for that matter, because there, it's automated station. Well, that station is not designed to measure snow. So we've had some events where we've actually we have no record from Metro Airport. But if you go to some neighboring sites in the metro area, you see some reasonable snows. A good example is and, and, and I'm drawing a blank right now, but it was several years ago where we've got nothing from the airport but four inches of snow at Brownsfield, which is, what, a mile from the airport. Mm -hmm. So that you got to be careful when you look at that particular record because it doesn't always give us uh, what we need to know in terms of what really fell in the area. Okay. And with snow, especially in South Louisiana, it can be very pocket-driven. I mean, you can get two, three, four inches in one spot and 20 miles away, it's it's barely a dusting. Well, Jay, I guess my last question to you is going to be, in Jay Grimes' opinion, which I think you know this, everyone highly respects that opinion, give us the well, best you. and worst case scenarios. Best case scenario. Oh, okay. Best case scenario is two inches of snow, uh, and we get above freezing for six hours on Wednesday with all that sunshine helping to melt the roads. The best case scenario is not going to happen. Let me say that. Now let's go to the worst case scenario. Now the worst case scenario, and even the weather service is popping this up, is pockets of 10 to 12 inches of snow. I don't think that's going to happen either. But can you imagine what would happen if 10 inches of snow fell on the capital city uh, with temperatures never getting above freezing? That would shut us down deep into Thursday. Yes. Uh, so I, I think I'm fairly comfortable with these numbers. Two to five uh, with a swath of that heavier snow probably being on the west side of the Atchafalaya Basin. So Baton Rouge still could see three to four to maybe five inches of snow. But I see a pretty good uh, dousing of even more snow uh, basically from just east of Lafayette over towards, say, Jennings in that area there. And oh, yeah, by the way, that belt of heaviest snow is going to probably fall right on top of the I-10. And that's why I think that uh, uh, LSP and DOTD are going to have their hands full just trying to keep the interstate open, much less state and U.S. highways. 
So this is going to be, that's why I'm telling everybody, if you live south of Alexandria, be ready to not only miss out on action on Tuesday, in other words, stay home on Tuesday, but also be ready to stay home on Wednesday too. Maybe we won't have to, and maybe uh, uh, we'll get a situation where the roads clean up or clear up a little faster than I'm anticipating. But I would say be prepared for being effectively housebound for two days. And oh yeah, please limit your sightseeing. That just adds to the mess. You got it. Anything else that you want to add that I have not asked? No, I think we got it covered there. Are your sleeves rolled up? They are rolled up. <sighs> My red boots are not on yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, get them on. Because <laughs> just the cold alone. Here's the thing. Even if they didn't snow so much as a dusting, the cold alone is going to get everybody's attention. Not just how cold it gets, but how long it lasts. Not a record by any stretch. But I think for South Louisiana, this is going to probably fall within the uh, top five or top six uh, freeze events in terms of combination, how cold and duration. Now throw an unusual snow on top of that. And you're talking about a significant winter event for a part of the country that doesn't normally have to deal with this. Daniel, is there anything else that we want to ask? I think that we've got our executive producer on the line as well. So just want to make sure we're not forgetting anything. Um, Jay, as always, we thank you so much for your time and keep us updated. And to our viewers, of course, we're going to continue to keep you updated on all platforms of Unfiltered. If you don't already have our app, make sure you download that and follow us on all platforms. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Thanks, Jay. Let thank me you, hit Daniel. stop real quick. So 